Okay. A great night to one and all. Welcome to the March 2024 Philippine Licensure Examination for Teachers Review for Mathematics Majors. I am Mr. Kim Chasey Encho and I will be discussing with you another set of 40 items tonight. So last week we discussed set one. This time we will discuss another set of 40 items for set two. So I hope that you are ready and let's begin this session now. So the directions, um, assuming that you are writing, no? So write the letter of the correct answer na lang po, or shade the letter of the, of the correct answer. And are you ready? I believe you are. So let's do this. Let's start. Uh, so I will be flashing to you the questions. And uh, I believe there is an assumption that majority or most of you have answered the, the quizzes. Okay? And this is a discussion. So this one is still recorded and you will be provided with a PDF copy of the presentation as well as the video of the recorded session. So good evening again. Let's begin with item number one. The following are equivalent conversions exempt. Is it A, 1 inch equals 2.54 cm? B, 1 ml equals one, uh, 1 mile is equal to 1.609 km. Letter C, 1 meter cube equals 100 liters. Or letter D, 1 hectare equals 10,000 meters squared. All right, so please comment down your answer po. And we have four people who commented letter C. Let's see if you are correct. One inch equals 2.54 cm is actually correct. One mile equals is actually equal to 1.609 kilometers. So this is another fact. So tama po yung letter B. Yung letter C, 1 meter cubic walls, 100 liters. Sabi ni Sir Kevin, 1,000 daw. And yes, I agree. Letter C is in fact incorrect conversion because 1 meter cube or 1 cubic meter is equal to 1,000 liters. And letter D, 1 hectare is equal to 10,000 meters squared is another fact. Hence, the correct answer po is letter C. Okay. Let's have item number two. Give the probability of a boy is called to recite a poem in a class of 14 girls and 35 boys. Did you go for five sevens? Two sevens. One over 14 or one fourth? Okay. This comment po. Okay, number two daw, letter A, which is 5 over 7. May sumagot din mga ilang ilang B. Okay. Take note na lalaki po yung sasagot, no? So, let's say, let's see kung sino nga ba. Kung 5 sevens ba o 2 sevens. From here, we know that there are 14 girls and 35 boys which means that there are 13, I mean 14 plus 35 equals 49 students in all. But since we are talking about the probability of a boy, no? So it's equal to the total number of boys divided by the total number of students. Meron tayong 35 boys out of the 49 students and simplifying 35 over 49 yields 5 over 7. Letter A. So to those who got A, congratulations po. I hope na nakuha po natin yung explanation. Item number three. The distance between 0, 1 and point P is 5. The coordinates of P could not be A, negative 4, 4, B, 5, 2, C, 0, 6, or D, 3, 5. Okay, so remember po natin, no? so we are talking about the distance between two points. And I hope that we could still recall how to find the distance between two points. 
So, may sumagot for letter, for number 3, which is B. Okay, tingnan natin. Okay. Now, so remember that, I hope you could still recall, no? That to get the distance between two points, x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2, the formula D equals the square root of the quantity x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared is applicable, where D here is the distance between them. So, di ba yung una 0, 1? So, try natin yung letter A option na negative 4, comma 4. Check natin kung distance nila 5. So, sa so dito po, yung 0 yung x sub 1, yung 1 yung y sub 1. Yung negative dito sa second point, negative 4 is yung x sub 2, and 4 is the y sub 2. And by substitution po sa ating formula, you have d equals the square root of the quantity negative 4 minus 0 quantity squared plus 4 minus 1 quantity squared. So this one that simplifies to negative 4 squared, which is 16. 4 minus 1 here is 3, and 3 squared simplifies to 9. 16 plus 9 is equal to 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So indeed, the distance between 0, 1, and negative 4, 4 is 5 units. How about yung letter B option po natin? For letter B option, try po natin si 0, 1 with 5, 2. So, ito po, no? ito pa rin po yung x sub 1, y sub 1 natin. And 5, 2 is your x sub 2 and y sub 2 respectively. By substitution to the same formula, you have d equals the square root of the quantity 5 minus 0 squared plus the quantity 2 minus 1 squared. So 5 minus 0 is 5. So squaring it would give us 25. Whereas 2 minus 1 here is 1. So that's why you have 1 squared here, which is just 1. And 25 plus 1 simplifies to 26. And the distance between 0, 1 and 5, 2 is square root of 26, which, of course, is not equal to 5. So 5, 2 po ang tamang sagot D. For letter C option, na 0, 6, applying the formula, no? Using a similar principle, that's 0 minus 0 squared plus 6 minus 1 squared. This actually simplifies to 0 squared plus 5 squared, which is just square root of 25 or simply 5. And for option D po natin, if you try 0, 1 with 3, 5, you will get 3 minus 0 quantity squared plus 5 minus 1 quantity squared. And this simplifies to 3 squared plus 4 squared. 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16. And 9 plus 16 po is equal to 25. And still, the distance between them is 5 units. So among all the choices, only option B is not 5 units away with 0, 1. So sa lahat po ng sumagot ng B, be happy dahil tama po ang sagot ninyo. Thank you po. I, I hope the explanation is clear. Number four. The length of the rectangle is 4L and the width is 3W. What is the perimeter? Is it A, 12LW, B, 4L plus 3W, C, 8W plus 6L, or D, 8L plus 6W? Okay, many. Okay, so majority of you answered letter D. And some of you answered letter C. So, sino kaya ang tama? Check po natin. So, tandaan po natin no, that the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle is simply twice the length added by twice the width. But since your length here D, no, is 4L po, and yung width po natin is 3W, by substitution, magiging 2 times 
P equals 2 times 4L plus 2 times 3W. From here, 2 times 4L simplifies to 8L, no? Plus 2 times 3W simplifies to 6W. So, <laughs> nagkapalit po siguro. The correct answer po ay letter D. So, careful po ha. Siguro pares lang 8, 6, no? Pero be careful. Yung letter C kasi is 8W plus 6L. Okay lang po yan. Minsan kasi nagkakamali rin tayo. Gaya nung unang ginawa ko. Ha? Ano daw? Okay. Kidding aside. Nabudol, coach. Yes. Nabudol po ako for today's, but not for today's video. Okay. Number five. Nako, tama na. Number five. Polygons are closed geometric figures with many sides. Polygon with seven sides is a what? Is it a pentagon, a heptagon, a hexagon, or a nonagon? Okay, letter B. Many of you are convinced the letter B. And if you answered B, a triangle has three sides. Four-sided polygons are what we call quadrilateral. Five sides is pentagon. Ang six sides, hexagon. Ang seven, heptagon. Ang eight sides ay octagon. Nine sides is nonagon. Ten sides is decagon. So the correct answer here po, tama nga naman kayo. Letter B. Okay. Number six. Solve the given quadratic equation by factoring. Is it? Okay. X squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Okay. Did you go for A, B, C, or D? Okay. If you don't mind po, comment po sa ating chat. Ano po ba yung, fac yung dalawang factors ng x squared minus 6x plus 8? What are the two factors po? Okay, sabi ni Ma'am Margo, Ma'am uh, Ma Santos, it's x minus 2 times x minus 4, same win, with uh, Sir Mario, Sir Layag, and to everyone who commented. So to those who answered that, congratulations. Tama po kayo. And take note ha, since multiplication is commutative, pwede x minus 2 times x minus 4, pwede ring x minus 4 times x minus 2. And from here, by the zero property of multiplication, what we have to do po is equate each factor to zero. So if x minus 2 equals zero, adding both sides by 2, yields x equals 2. And the second factor, x minus 4 equals zero, adding both sides by 4, yields x equals 4. So indeed, 2 and 4 are the values of x. Letter D. Okay. I hope na clear po. Number seven. And take note, kung my questions or clarifications, feel free to chat. Number seven. A dish company needs to ship an order of 117 bowls. The company will put the bowls into several boxes. Each box must contain the same number of bowls. How many boxes could the company use for the order? Did you go for 17, 12, 13, or 11? Okay. I could see that some of you answered 13. It's Okay, 13 daw. Okay, let's see kung tama po. Take note, no? Dahil equal po dapat yung number of bowls sa bawat box. It therefore follows that the number of boxes should be a factor of 117. It's like, it's like the problem is asking which of the following is a factor of 117. Parang ganun po yung ina-ask niya. Okay? So, with that, we know that 117 will be expressed as 1 times 117. Pwede rin siyang 3 times 39. Pwede rin siyang 9 times 13. And of course, no, pwede rin silang pagbalik na rin. So with this, we could say, if you could see no, that 13 is one of the factors of 117 and the rest of the choices, the, and the rest of the numbers 
in the other choices are not factors of 178. Hence, the correct answer here is 13, letter C. Okay, good job po. And thank you, Sir Mario. Yeah, 13 times 9. Thank you. Number 8. A recipe calls for two eggs for every five cups of flour. A local chief will use 35 cups of flour. How many uh, eggs must he have? Is it A, 16, 12, 14, or 13? Of course, with the assumption na dapat by proportion. I could see many C's coming from you. And of course, we can utilize the concept of proportion here. No? By proportion, it says dito na for every two eggs, limang cups of flour. So here, no? If for every two eggs equals five cups of flour, how about for how many eggs for 35 cups of flour? Take note, ha? Nakapag nasasolve po tayo ng direct proportion, kung dito dapat same yung ratio dito. Same yung sequence. Ito, eggs to flour, dapat sa right side, eggs to flour din dapat. And kaya po nang sinabi natin, no? In a proportion, the product of the means, yung nasa loob po, 5 times x or 5x is equal to the product of the extremes, which is 2 times 35 here. The 2 times 35 simplifies to 70, and 5x equals 70, and dividing both sides by 5 gives you x equals 14. So tama nga naman po yung letter C natin. Or yung ginagawa po ng iba, simple lang. No? Dini-divide po muna nila yung 30, 35 by 5. So 35 divided by 5 is 7. Tapos yung sagot, minumultiply sa 2. So 2 times 7 will give you still 14 pa rin po. Okay. Number 9. A businessman had incurred the following expenses in his trips to the country. 5,100 pesos, 4,600 pesos, 3,800 pesos, and 3,200 pesos. What was his total expense for the trip? Did you go for A, B, C, or D? Okay, so if you could notice po, no, for the first two sets po natin, parang chill lang po muna tayo. No? Hindi po siya ganun talaga ka, uh, ka heavy. no. But it's more of Mathematical, basic mathematical concepts po muna tayo ngayon. So, yes, all right. And many of you answered A. And of course, the best thing to do here is add all of them. And you could see, no? You could do this with the help of your calculator. It's letter, saglit lang po ah. Malipuatan na lagay ko, saglit lang po. All right. And with that note, it's actually letter A instead of letter C. Ay, okay. Sige po. Thank you. That is noted. Number 10. Five out of every seven households have cable television. If 42,000 households in a certain thousands uh, in a certain city have a TV, how many do not have? And take note po ha. Let's remove the term thousands. Okay, so what do you think? Okay, it says there, 12,000 daw. Yung sabi ng Mr. Ni Ma Teacher Laya, Mabalay, Mabsheni, okay. Ma'am Jackie Lu, Ma'am Jezebel. Okay, let's see kung tama po. Five out of every seven ang merong cable television. So from this one, it follows that five sevens have cable television. Pero yung tinatanong po kasi is walang cable television eh. So by, di ba? So with such, by complementation, masasabi po nating 1 minus 5 sevens or 2 sevens of the residents in that, of the families there, no? Do not have a cable television. And dahil 42,000 po yung lahat ng, lahat sila, 
then what we can do is simply take two sevenths of 42,000, which is simply 12,000. So to those who answered letter B, 12,000, you got it right. According to Sir Kevin, gumawa siya ng ratio and proportion. No? So 5 is to 7 equals X is to... Okay, yung no cable niya is 42,000 minus X. Okay, pama din po yun, sir. No? So you will do the product of means equals the product of extremes also. Thank you, Paul. 11. The perimeter of an equilateral triangle and a square are both equal to 60 cm. How many cm shorter is a side of a square than a side of a triangle? Okay. I could see that. Take note, no? Yung equilateral triangle, tatlong equal sides. Yung square, four equal sides. So how much shorter is a side of the square than a side of your triangle? Be thou. Tingnan natin. From here, since to get the length of a side of your equilateral triangle, of course, let's just divide the perimeter 60 by 3, and that's 20 cm per side. For a square, knowing the 60 then yung perimeter niya, 60 divided by 4 yields a side length of 15 cm for your square. And since you are asked of how much longer, so all we have to do is subtract the length of a side of a square of your uh, equilateral triangle by 15 cm. So 20 cm minus 15 cm gives us 5 cm, letter B. All right, so far, so good po, mga mams and sirs. Push lang po natin to. Okay? Pero kung hindi po kaya talaga, huwag po natin pilitin. Kasi masasaktan na po tayo minsan kapag pinilit po natin. Kung kailangan po natin bumitaw, minsan bumitaw tayo dapat. Ha? Kahit ayaw pa ng puso. Walay. Number 12. The sum of two numbers is 90. Their difference is 18. What is the smaller number? Did you go for 36, 48, 54, or 61? Okay, letter A daw. All right. So sabi ni Sir Kevin, may siyang dalawang equations, x plus y equals 90, and x minus y equals 18. And I agree with that, no? So if I let x to be the larger number and y to be the smaller number, so x plus y is 90, and their difference is x minus y, which is x minus y, is 18. Adding both sides of the equation to eliminate y, x plus x will be 2x, y plus negative y becomes 0, and the 90 plus, that's why 2x na lang po yung natira sa uh, left side. Sa right side naman po, 90 plus 18 equals 108. Dividing both sides by 2, gives us x equals 52. Then, yung next na ginawa ko po is, pwede po natin i-substitute yung 52, yung x equals 52, either to the first or to the second equation. Pinili ko po yung first equation. Na, um, ah, sorry, I'll get, susi po. So, take note, instead of 52, x should be 54. And substituting x equals 54 to the very first equation here, we get 54 plus y equals 90. And subtracting both sides by 54 gives y equals 36. Hence, letter A po yung tamang sagot natin. All right. 13. A tray of eggs contains 30 pieces. Each piece cost 5 pesos. Sana all. Sana babalik pa tayo sa time na bawat itlog, libang piso lang. Lisa sells each egg at 5 pesos and 80 centavos each. O baka malat, no, itlog to ng pugo. We don't know. How much is her profit if she sold 6.5 trays of salted eggs? Is it 125, 156, 170, or 180?
Okay. It's quite interesting, no? So, yung sagot po natin ay letter B, which is 156. And meron pong proposal si Sir Kevin dyan na ang profit per egg ay 650.80 times 650 times 30. And I agree with that, Sir Kevin. I will explain why. How many eggs are there in six and a half trays? Kung bawat tray may 30 eggs. Diba? 195. Bakit 195? Kasi nga, ang 6 trays, 6 times 30, yung aling na tray, 180 eggs na yun. Yung half ng tray, kalahati ng tray, 1 half of 30 is 15 eggs. That's why 180 plus 15, you have 195 eggs in all. Tapos po, magkano nga ba yung profit niya bawat itlog? Bawat egg po, na binibenta niya, na, bin, na binili, binili niya, no? For 5 pesos, ay binibenta niya for 5 pesos and 80 centavos. And the difference of the two, which is 80 centavos, is the profit per egg. And what will we do now with 195.80? We can now multiply them, and their product is 156 pesos. Hence, the profit is 156 pesos. Oh. Of course, with the assumption here na lahat po ng eggs na yun ay kanyang naibenta. At that certain price. Thank you everyone for your comments and suggestions and for the solutions you proposed. Number 14. Tim is weighing his bag. He says, if I add 815 grams it will weigh 3 kilograms. What is the weight of Kim's bag? Did you go for A, B, C, or D? Okay. Letter C po yung sagot ng karamihan sa atin. Lang man nag-comment. No? Sa lahat po nag-comment, I mean, yung sagot nyo ay C, which is 2185 grams. Now, as I also agree with, you know, with the comments na yung 1 kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. Therefore, it follows that 3 kilograms is equal to 3,000 grams by proportion or by conversion as well. Sabi sa problem, let's say yung sa blank na to, yun yung weight ng bag niya. Sabi sa problem, if the weight of my bag will be added by 815 grams, then you will have 3 kilograms na total weight. That's why I have arrived to this uh, blank plus 815 equals 3,000. I'm subtracting both sides by 815 grams to solve for the blank. We arrive to 2,185 grams. So hence, the bag originally weighs 2,185 grams, letter C. Okay, good job everyone. And thank you po Sir Kevin, pumalakpak po si Ma'am Christine. <laughs> Sana all. Okay, so all of your efforts po are well appreciated. Thank you po. 15. Only 65 people are allowed inside the bus during the field trip. If a school has 460 students, who will join the field trip, how many buses are needed? Is it A, 5, B, 6, C, 7, or D, 8? Okay, ma many or so far, D yung sagot ng mga nagko-comment po. Okay, let's see. Tama nga kayo? I agree with Sir Kevin no, na kailangan po nating mag-divide. So, to do this, you could see na 460 divided by 65 yields 7 buses, remainder 5. And the thing is, so how many buses are needed? Because this number that you will get is between 7 or 8. Do you think 7 lang? Or do you think na 8 dapat? And the correct answer is? Eight nga ba? <laughs> Sabi dito, 
may yan, yan yung ano yung kadalasang ano di ba nung iba standing lang yung lima <laughs> okay actually the correct answer here is eight letter D because why according sa problem only no so kahit so may kapag yung limang yan kapag yung isa sa lima ay nilagay mo sa isang bus yung isang bus ay magkakaroon na ng 60, ng 66 students. So, mapapayulit niya yung condition ng problem. And, so therefore, that's why you have to add an additional bus. Swerte nung isa kong bus, kung lima lang ang laman, <laughs> ay grabe siya. Standing yung lima. Okay. But the thing is, no, you should need to have another bus. And, another, another logic po siguro in having another bus is, so that, hindi po niyo mamamaximize yung 65 talaga. Halimbawa, kapag may additional bus, yung sa isang bus, instead of 65, pwedeng gawing 60 na lang or may space pa, no? Na hindi mo talaga isisiksik yung 65 talaga. Okay. So, 8 po talaga, no? So, sa case na to po, kailangan po nating magtagtag ng isa. Ng isa pang bus. <laughs> 16. To make a school uniform, the dressmaker needs one and three fifths meters of cloth. She has 18 and a half meters of cloth. How many school uniforms can she make? Is it 9, 10, 11, or 12? Okay, so dito, 11. Okay, sumagot naman yung letter C. No? Okay. So sabi ni Sir Kevin, 18.5 divided by 1 and 3 fifths. So, C din yung sagot ng karamihan sa atin po. So, let's see kung tama nga kayo. So, this, similar to that problem earlier, no? You can solve this problem by using division. So, 18.5 divided by 1 and 3 fifths. Pero yung ginawa ko po kasi, no? Mas comfortable. Minsan, minsan, kasi may calculator naman, mas comfortable ako sa decimal minsan. Kung may calculator. So, yung one-half nito, ginawa ko na lang 0.5. Yung three pips, naging 0.6 na lang. Or if you wish, you could encode that in your calculator, no? And 18.5 divided by 1.6 results to 11.5625. And this number is between 11 and 12. Pero yung tanong is, is it 11 or is it 12? Can we consider the remainder na 0.5625 as one complete uniform? Tanungin po natin yung self natin. Again, tanungin po natin. Can we consider the decimal part 0.5625 as one complete school uniform? Di ba hindi? That's why kapos sa tela. Can you imagine nagpapatahi ka ng, ng damit ng pangitaas tapos Walang, baka dahil kulang sa tela, wala siyang manggas, walang kwelyo, parang ganun, or walang sleeves, di ba? That's why in this case, sometimes we have to use our intuition. No? Sometimes we have to relate it back to reality. Yung 0.5625 ay hindi po natin pwedeng makonsider na one complete school uniform kasi nga kapos sa tela. So therefore, 11 lang po talaga. Letter C. So careful po tayo ha. Meron pong instances like yung kanina, yung previous item, na ground up po tayo. Kailangan sumobra. But in this case, kailangan nating yung sobra ay hindi, yung remainder I mean na decimal, ay hindi po natin pwedeng ituring no? na isang uniform talaga. That's why na ground down po ako. So be careful po. There are instances that we have to round up there are also instances that we have to round down. Okay? So careful po. Letter C po talaga ang tamang sagot. Proceed sa so number 17. Lisbeth has read four fifths of the total number of pages of a book. She still reads to she still needs to read one tenth of the total number of pages. Uh sagot lang po ha. Now, um, 
So to correct the deficiencies, no, there was a part that was uh, deleted, sorry. So she read 17 pages and still needs to read one-tenth of the total number of pages to finish reading the book. So how many pages does the book have? Is it 150, 160, 170, or 175? Okay, let's see if you got it right. So we don't know the number of pages of this book yet. So let X be the number of pages of a book. Sabi sa problem, nabasa na ni Lisbeth yung four-fifths ng number of pages. So I have your four-fifths X. Plus, nagbasa siya ng 17 pages. So plus 17. Pero after niyang magbasa ng four-fifths, the total number of pages plus 17 more, may one-tenth pa siyang kailangang basahin. May one-tenth of the total number of pages pa siyang kailangang basahin upang matapos niyang basahin ang all pages of the book, which is X. That's why I arrived to the equation 4 fifths X plus 17 plus 1 over 10 X equals X. From here po, um, I multiplied both sides by the LCD, no? So yung mga denominators po natin ay 5 and 10. And so the LCM of 5 and 10 is 10. So I multiplied both sides by 10 to clear up fractions. So dito, 10 divided by 5, that's uh, 2 times 4 will be 4x will be 8x. Distribute 10 times 17 will be 170. 10 times 1 over 10x will be x. And equals 10 times x will be 10x. Tapos, I combine like terms po sa left-hand side. So yung 8x at saka x simplifies to 9x. Then 9x plus 170 equals 10x. And I subtracted both sides by 9x, giving us 170 equals x. Or by the symmetric by the by symmetric property of equality, then x is equal to 170. So letter C is the correct answer. Okay, so thank you, po, Sir Kevin and Ma'am uh, Jackie Lu, for your comments. No? 18. Marie has 51 apples. She is going to give them equally to eight children. How many more apples are needed so that each child will receive nine apples? Did you go for 15, 18, 20, or 21? D Dao, 21. Sabi ni Ma'am Jackie Lu, same with Ma'am Shenny, with Ma'am Larissa as well. Okay, and Sir Kevin also suggested another solution, no? And thank you also. Uh, I'm not sure, no, Mom Neck, if, if, if this is Mom or Sir Neck uh, Layag. So, thank you. So, how many apples does she need? Kailangan niya ng 72. Bakit? Sabi dito, may walong bata. Bawat bata, siyam yung apples na ibibigay niya. Hence, he needs... She needs 8 times 9 or 72 apples in all. However, 51 pa lang ang meron siya. That's why subtracting 72 by 51 tells us that she needs 21 more apples, letter D. Good job, everyone. Okay, 19. How many scores are there in a millennium? Is it A, 10, B, 20, C, 30, or D, 50? I hope na familiar po kayo sa term na score. Okay. Kung, okay. Ilang years po ba yung score? Ang score ay equal sa how many years? Anyone? One score? is equal to how many years? Okay, sabi ni Ma'am Ani uh, Teacher Neck, layag, 20 years. And I agree with that. A decade is 10 years. No? 
A century is 100 years. A millennium is 1,000 years. And how about a score? A score is in fact a period of time equal to 20 years. With such, with this, all we have to do is divide 1,000 by 20, and this gives us 50. Indeed, there are 50 scores in a millennium. So letter B. Okay, so 19, dog po yung tamang sagot natin. But if you don't get the letter D, it's okay, no? So it's a learning experience po para sa ating lahat. Salamat. 20. Which of the following is the biggest? Did you go for 2 raised to 25, 3 raised to 20, 5 raised to 15, or 7 raised to 10? Okay, letter C daw, sabi ni Ma'am Neck. So siguro, I'm not sure, no? Siguro because all of us have our calculators. So sabi ni Sir Kevin, trial and error, hehehe. <laughs> Okay, wala pong masama doon, no? So, letter C. <laughs> okay. So, what is your answer? Letter C. How did you get the correct answer? Some of you said trial and error. You just use your calculator. That's good. Remember that in the board exam, the examiner does not care how you got the correct answer. What is important in the left, in the licensure examination, is that you are able to get the right answer and shade your answer properly. No? But for now, no, um, I will teach you how to do this even without calculator. So, ginamit po natin na property, ay meron po tayong property na x raised to m if raised to n is equal to x raised to mn. That is, if you are raising a power to another exponent, just copy the base and raise it to the product of the two exponents. For example, x squared cubed equals x raised to 2 times 3 or 6. Pero yung gagawin po natin ngayon ay baliktad. I will give you this expression and you will give it back into this format. So, tignan po ninyo. Balikan po natin. Tignan po ninyo yung mga exponents. 25 20, 15, 10. Ano po yung greatest common factor ng exponents natin? Okay, 5, di ba? 5 po yung GCF ng exponents. So yung gagawin po natin is, factor out po natin yung 5. So the 25 is raised, expressed as 5 times 5. Pinalabas po yung isang 5, yung isa sa loob. So this is equal to 2 raised to 5, quantity to the fifth. But we know that 2 raised to 5 is equal to 32, di po ba? That's why 2 raised to 25 could be expressed as 32 to the fifth power. In a similar manner, yung exponent ng 3 i 20, and we know that 20 is equal to 4 times 5. Bakit, bakit nilagay ko talaga yung 5? Kasi 5 is the greatest common factor ng mga exponents natin. That's why I express this no, as 3 to the 4th to the 5th, but we know that 3 raised to 4 is equal to 81. Hence, 3 raised to 20 is equal to 81 to the 5th power. Matry nyo nga po. Sige, ito. How about yung 5 raised to 15? Ano po yung mangyayari sa 5 raised to 15? It will be blank raised to 5. Ano po ito? Okay. So 5 cubed to the 5th. Tama po. Or 125 raised to the 5th power. And lastly, ano nga yung last? Uh, check ko ano nga yung last. <laughs> Yung last is 7 raised to 10. How about yung 7 raised to 10 po? Ano pong mangyayari sa 7 raised to 10? 7 raised to 10 will become 7 squared to the fifth or 14 or... Uh, sabit lang po ha. And I do agree with you that 7 to the 10 
becomes 49 raised to 5 using this line of reasoning. And if you could see, all of these positive integers are raised to the same exponent, which is 5. And with such, the number with the largest base is the largest number. Hence, we could say that 5 raised to 15 is the largest among all of them. So tama po yung letter C. Good job, everyone. 51. Uh, 21. An 8-meter ribbon cost 96 pesos. How much is the cost of 4.5 meters of ribbon? Is it 45, 54, 64, or 74? Okay, let her be now, 54. And tama nga ba yung 54? Let's see. By ratio and proportion, 8 meters is to 96 pesos. How about for 4.5 meters is to X pesos? So in a similar manner kanina, no? Yung product ng extremes, A times X, is equal to the product of the mean. So 96 times 4.5 which is 432. Dividing both sides by 8, you get x equals 54. So tama po yung letter B. So 54 pesos po yung babayaran. May isa pa pong alternative method, no? In fact, there are many ways of doing this. How much is per meter of ribbon? Diba sabi, 96 pesos for 8 meters. So... It means that 96 pesos divided by 8 is equal to 12 pesos bawat meter. So yes, I agree po, Ma'am Magdalene. Thank you po. And since 4.5 meters na naman yung bibilhin mo, so that's 4.5 times 12, that gives you 54 pesos. Still, letter B. Yes. Yes po. Same po, Ma'am Thea. Thank you po. We have Ma'am Thea from Camarines Sur, no? So I think napapakinggan po tayo sa iba't ibang dako ng Pilipinas o oh, maybe in other parts of the world. So magandang gabi po, mabuhay. 22. Of the fractions 3 fifths, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 4 sevenths, which is the smallest? Did you go for 4 sevenths, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, or 3 fifths? Letter A daw, 4 sevenths. Okay. So... Take note po ha, meron po tayong calculator. So let's make good use of our calculator. Remember that the fraction bar, by the way po, ano po bang other terms of fraction bar? Yung, yung for example, 3 over 4. Ano pong tawag dito? Supposedly horizontal po talaga yan, no? yung ideal. No? Ang tawag po dyan ay, it starts with letter V. We call that vinculum. Okay, tandaan po natin yan ha. Vinculum. Vinculum is the technical term no, that refers to the fraction bar or it's the bar that separates the numerator and the denominator. And of course, it means or it implies division. So yung ginawa ko po simple lang. Siyempre, <laughs> divide lang. 3 divided by 5 by calculator is 0. 0.60. 2 thirds is 0. 0.666 and so on. 3 fourths is 0. 0.75. And 4 sevenths is approximately 0.5714. And clearly, it's letter A, 4 sevenths, which is the smallest of them all. Okay. I hope na clear po sa atin. 23. Mato, added 2 to a number, then divided the sum by 3. He multiplied the quotient by 10, then subtracted 7 from the product and got a difference of 23. What was the number he started with? Started with. Is it 5, 6, 7, or 8? Okay, let her see daw. Maybe yung iba sa inyo, I'm not sure no, kung ano pong ginawa natin. Meron po bang nag-trial and error dito? <laughs> siguro, no? Meron nag-trial and error siguro. Maybe. But actually, we can do this without trial, trial and error. Wow, grabe. Si Sir Kevin, my equation. X plus 2 over 3 times 10 minus 7 equals 23. Pwede din, no? Pero yung actually, yung ginawa ko po, I simply working backwards. 
Di ba ito po yung given? We don't know what the number is. Basta plus 2. Yung ito, divide by 3 times 10 minus 7 until na-reach mo yung 23. Take note po ha, that addition and subtraction are inverse operations of one another. <laughs> okay lang po. So kung plus, yung inverse niya minus. Kung minus, yung inverse niya plus. And also, multiplication and division are inverses, are inverse operations of one another. Meaning yung times, yung inverse uh, divide. Yung divide, inverse niya, times. So like ganito po. Diba minus 7? Verse ng minus 7. It will be plus 7, di po ba? Dahil minus 7, yung inverse niya plus 7. We will implement the inverse operation. 23 plus 7. That would be 30, right? So 30 po yan dyan. Oh, next, nakalagay dito, times 10. Anong inverse operation po ng times 10? That will be divided by, by 10. So, ano po dapat yung sa next na box? 3. Tama po. O, oh, dito, nag-divide by 3 ka. So, anong gagawin mo? Anong inverse ng division by 3? That would be times 3. So, 3, this 3 here na nasa loob ng box, times 3 will be 9. So, 9 po yan dapat. And dito, dahil plus 2, at po yung gagawin natin? Anong inverse ng plus 2? Minus 2. And 9 minus 2 gives you 7. Indeed, the number Mato started with is letter C, 7. Okay, so don't worry po. Iba man po yung process ninyo. At the end of the day, yung mahalaga makuha po natin yung best, matry po natin yung best natin na makuha yung tamang sagot. Okay? Welcome po. 24. The area of the square ABCD below is 16 centimeters squared. If CE is 1 cm, what is the area of triangle ABE in cm squared? Is it 5, 6, 8, or 10? Yes, tama po Mama Jirin. Minsan okay rin palang bumabalik. Haha, <laughs> salamat coach. Yes, don't worry po. Minsan may mga bagay-bagay na kailangan balikan, pero minsan may mga bagay-bagay na rin sigurong kailangan kalimutan. Pero wag po natin kalimutan yung mga lessons na nalearn natin sa experience na yan. Okay. So, sagot ni Sir Arvin, 10 daw. How about the others po? B daw, 6. Mm -hmm. Triangle ABE po yung tinatanong, ha? Triangle ABE po. Okay. Tingnan po natin. From here, alam po natin that the formula for the area of a square is S squared. But since yung area is given to be 16, no? So it follows that taking the positive square root of both sides, the value of the length of a side of a square is 4 units. Because square root of 16 is 4. So that's why ito po yung gawa niya. No? So 4 ito. Pero sabi dito kasi 1 to eh. 1 ito, di ba? So therefore, dahil nga 4 cm din ito, dahil square has 4 equal sides, it follows that the length here going in this part is 4 minus 1 cm or simply 3 cm. And yung hinahanap po nating formula, no? Is yung formula ng white region o lang triangle. And you could see from here that this is in fact a right triangle. No? So the base here could be 4 and the height could be 3. And by substitution, that becomes 4 times 3 all over 2 or simply 6 cm squared. So letter B ang tamang sagot. Ah, okay. Sagot po ah. 25. 
If 25 plus x minus 100 is equal to 75, what is x? Is it 0, 75, 125, or 150? Okay, letter D, the 150. Let's see if D is correct. From here, um, combining like terms, no? 25 minus 100 is minus 75. That's why X minus 75 equals 75. So to isolate X, we will add 75 both sides of the equation. And this gives us X equals 150. Letter D. I think this one is... Uh, a lot easier, no? <laughs> Next number. 75% of one half of a number is 9 times 5. What is the number? Is it 100, 115, 120, or 150? <laughs> may lumalabas po minsan, no? Minsan kasi hindi natin may ano, no? May times na very easy yung ibang uh, items. Mayroon ding mga parts na medyo difficult po. But as what I mentioned, um, start po muna tayo sa basic. Letter C, 120. Mm -hmm. May sumagot din ng 150. Uh, I mean, pre maybe previous item pa yan siguro. Okay, 120 din yung sagot ni Sir Kevin, ni Ma'am Sheni, ni Ma'am ni Teacher Neck, ni Ma'am Jackie Lu. All right. So from here, 75% is 3 fourths, no? We just convert this because this time I'll be utilizing fractions ko muna. 75% means 75 over 100 or 3 fourths. Also, 1 half is already in fraction form, so I'll just copy 1 half. And it says 3 fourths of 1 half of x of the number is 9 times 5. That's why you could see this equation here. And mula rito po, um, 3 fourths times 1 half simplifies to 3 eighths. Okay? So 3 eighths of x equals 45. And of course, dahil nga nag-multiply ka ng 3 eighths dito, to make the numerical coefficient of x equal to 1, nag times 8 ka, tapos divide by 3. That's why 45 times 8 thirds simplifies to 15 eighths, which is 120 nga po, letter C. Okay, good job everyone. All right, letter C. Thank you po. 27. In a basket factory, Mario can finish 5 baskets in 3 hours, while Jose can finish 10 baskets in 4 hours. If they work at the same rate, how many baskets can they finish together? It's in 12 hours, is it 40, 50, 54, or 60? What do you think? Okay. Let's see. I see that B is the answer of many. Let's see. If Mario can finish five baskets in three hours, of course, no, we can assume uh, we will be assuming here in this case na uniform yung matatapos niya. With every 3 hours, 3 mang baskets lang. Pero di ba, merong 12 hours. If you divide 12 by 3, that's 4. Which means, sa 12, bawat 3 hours kasi, tatlong limang baskets yung matatapos ni Mario. Because there are 4 3-hour periods in 12 hours, so he could finish 20 baskets in 12 hours. That's for Mario only. However, yung kay Jose naman, since he could finish 10 baskets in 12, uh, in 4 hours, 12 divided by 4 is 3. And you could see that there are 3 4-hour periods in 12 hours. 
So 3 times 10 will be 30 baskets in 12 hours. No? That's why all in all, Jose can finish 30 baskets within the 12 within the 12 hour time frame. And of course, all in all, they could finish 20 plus 30 or 50 baskets. Letter B. So congratulations po sa lahat na nakuha ng B. I agree with as well with Ma'am Magilene Empleo with a solution. Thank you po, Ma'am. 29. At uh, 28, I mean. What is the smallest whole number X that will make X minus 13 great? How do you read the symbol? Is this greater than or is it less than? Yung symbol na to. Greater than ba ito or less than? Okay, be careful po ha. Kapag naka-face po, nakanganga sa left, greater than. Kapag nakanganga or if the opening is facing the right, less than po yan. So, okay, thank you po. So, see ang sagot ninyo. Let's see. If you have x minus 13 is greater than 17, adding both sides by 13, no? will give you x is greater than 17 plus 13. 17 plus 13, by the way, is 30. So it follows that x should be greater than 30. And the very first natural number greater than 30 is 31. Letter C. Okay, good job po. Thank you din po, Sir Kevin, and to everyone who commented. 29. Two identical trapezoids are put together to form a parallelogram. The bases of each trapezoids are eight are nine cm and eighteen cm. Its height is eight cm. What is the area of the parallelogram? Is it a one eighteen cm squared, b two sixteen cm squared, c two thirty cm squared, or d two fifty cm squared? Aha. Uh -huh. Number 29 pa lang po tayo, by the way. Mm -hmm. So I see a lot of Bs. Okay. So halimbawa po ito po yung itsura niya. No? Ito yung longer base mo na 18 cm. Ito yung shorter base mo na 9 cm. And the distance or the height, no, the is sim which is simply the distance between the two bases is 8 cm. So, sabi kasi sa problem, meron kang dalawa niyan eh. Tapos, ilalagay mo sila together side by side to form a, a parallelogram as shown. So, from here po, no? Kapag nangyari po ito, you could see, no, that this one is 27 cm. It's still here, but it's still 27 cm here. It's understood. Kasi nga, opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So you could see, you form a parallelogram with a base of twenty-seven of 18 plus 9 cm or 27 cm and the height of 8 cm. And to get the area of a parallelogram, it's simply base times height. So that's 27 times 8 or simply 216 cm squared letter B. Yung ginawa po siguro ng iba ay kinuha po ninyo yung area ng trapezoid. Tapos nag times 2 lang po kayo. Tama din po yun. So uh, according to Sir Kevin, no, yung formula ng trapezoid ay base 1 plus base 2 times height divided by 1 by divided by 2. Tama po yan. Tapos times 2 lang po. Times 2 dahil dalawang trapezoids po yung involved. I hope na nakuha po natin. 30. Or this is another way, no? Yun po yung sinasabi natin. Base 1 plus base 2 all over times height divided by 2. And by substitution, ito po yung kalabas, kinalabasan niya na 108 cm squared. Tapos, since there are two trapezoids and their total area is simply 2 times 108 cm squared, simple still 216 cm squared pa rin po. Letter B. Thank you. 30. A taxi charges 40 pesos flag down rate for the first kilometer 
and 3 pesos and 50 centavos for every succeeding 200 meters thereafter. How much will you pay after traveling for 2.4 kilometers? Did you go for 45, 50, 50, 64, 50, or 68? Can you see now? 64.50. So far, that answer came from Teacher Nek Layag and Ma'am Magilin and Pleo. Okay, let's see. No? Take note po, ah, I think marami po sa atin siguro ang nakatry ng mag-taxi din po. No? I am assuming na many of us have tried riding a taxi. So kapag nag-ride po tayo ng uh, taxi, um, Meron po tayong tinatawag na flag down rate. In this case, sabi dito, 40 pesos flag down rate for the first kilometer. Ibig sabihin po nito, kung yung itatravel mo na distance ay 1 kilometer or less, 40 pesos pa rin po talaga yung babayaran mo within the first kilometer. So dito po, whether you like it or not, 40 pesos po yan for the 1 kilometer distance na itatravel mo. And from here as well, no? Sabi sa problem, um, so the remaining distance is 2.4 kilometers minus 1 kilometer, which is still 1.4 kilometer. Yun nga lang, hindi pa tayo tapos. We know that 1.4 kilometers is equal to 1,400 meters using the conversion rule. And with this, sabi kasi sa problem, Bawat 200 meters ay magbabayad ka ng 3 pesos at 50 centavos no? for every succeeding 200 meters thereof. So with that, 1,400 meters divided by 200 meters gives you 7. What does this mean? It means na 7 times ka magbabayad ng additional 350 pesos. And that's 24 pesos and 50 centavos na additional payment mo. But since yung flag down rate ay 40 pesos at may additional ka pa na 24 pesos at 50 centavos, it means that your total payment to the taxi after traveling for uh, 2.4 kilometers is 64 pesos and 50 centavos, letter C. I hope na clear po sa atin. 31. The denominator of a fraction is 4 more than the numerator. If both the numerator and denominator of a fraction are increased by 1, the resulting fraction equals 1 half. Find the original fraction. Did you go for 1 fourth, 2 fifths, 3 sevenths, or 4 eighths? Okay, let her see now. All right. Okay, thank you din po, Ma'am Angeline, no, for the solution. Same po tayo. <laughs> okay, so far we have three people who commented letter C. Let's see. Siguro, take note po ha, dito pa lang po. The denominator of a fraction is four more than the numerator. Dito, dito pa lang po, makikita niyo yung one fourth. The denominator is just three more than the numerator. For letter B na two-fifths, the denominator na five is still three more than the numerator, which is two. So, dyan pa lang po, sure po tayo na mali si A at saka si B. But we could see for C and D, no? So, that's why C and D satisfies the first sentence. Let us focus on the second condition. Sabi sa problem, Kapag inadan mo ng 1, nag-add ka ng 1, both numerator and denominator, the resulting fraction becomes 1 half. So from here, 3 plus 1. Uh, so if you add 1 to both of them, it will be 4 over 8, which is 1 half. So tama po. Pero yung 4 eighths, nag letter D option, add ka ng 1, both of them, both numerator and denominator, it will result to 5 ninths, which is not equal to 1 half. Hence, we could say that letter C is the correct answer. 
So you see, no, hindi po ako gumamit ng algebra for now. Uh, what I did was I used um, trial and error muna or I just check which of them I performed elimination method, no? I eliminated the wrong choices and whatever choice or option left that satisfies, it's the correct answer. 32. If one yard equals three feet and one foot equals 12 inches, how many yards is 180 inches? Five, seven, eight, or nine? Okay, so it. All right. So according to Ma'am Teya, 180 over 12 is 15. 15 divided by 3 is 5. All right. Siguro iba po yung process ko, but yung mahalaga po, gaya po nung sinasabi natin palagi, iba man yung process, same yung answer. No? Or correct yung answer. Ito po yung ginawa ko. Yung ginawa ko po ay ginawa ko po ang lahat. Pero wala, eh, char lang. <laughs> okay. So I know that one yard is 3 feet. And that one foot is 12 inches. So gumamit po ako ng conversion factor parang malapisik sa tuwata. No? <laughs> so 180 inches is, di ba, one times one foot times one yard. But I know that one foot over 12 inches, nilagay ko siya sa ilalim kasi I could can can cancel the inches. And we know that three feet is one yard. So nilagay ko yung three feet sa iba pa at saka yung equivalent niya na one yard sa itaas kasi I could cancel the one the feet, no? That's why I have 180 times 1 times 1, which is 180 yards, divided by 12. So, maka-cancel po yung inches, inches, yung feet, feet. That's why yard po yung natira. Over 12 times 3, which is 36. And 180 divided by 36 is 5 yards, letter A. Good job, everyone. Nice walk. <laughs> 33. Express 3 and 3 fourths as an improper fraction in simplest form. So I think this is just, uh, I hope, no, basic po to sa ating lahat. So to express this in simplest form, no, the numerator of the improper fraction is the denominator times the whole number plus the numerator of the proper fraction. So it's 4 times 3, which is 12, plus 3, which is 15. And the denominator will still be 4. So it's 15 fourths, letter B. Okay. I think this one is, uh, I think all of you got this one properly or correctly. Thank you, Paul. 34. For what value of the side of a square are the perimeter and area numerically equal? Let's go for 4, 5, 7, or 8. Okay, letter A. Let's see kung tama kayo. So we know that area is a squared and perimeter is 4S. So dahil equal po sila, so X squared is equal to 4S. And subtracting both sides by 4S, so you arrive to S squared minus 4S equals 0. And you see, no, factorable po ito because both of them have the greatest common factor, which is S. So that's S times the quantity S minus 4 equals 0. And by the zero property of multiplication, again, we will equate each factor to 0, which means S is equal to 0 or S minus 4 is equal to 0, but S minus 4 equals 0 implies that S is equal to 4. So therefore, we will adapt the positive value, letter A, 4. And the alternative method, which uh, is not really very pretty accurate, assuming that the side is not equal to zero, I just divided both sides by S. No? And with that, so what I did was I divided both sides by S. No? That's why yung lapas niya, S equals 4. But again po, uh, don't try this at home. <laughs> Note that you can only do this method if you assume that if S if you set that S is not equal to zero. <laughs> Letter A. Yes. Dumayo nga po siya. Sige lang, ganyan talagang buhay. May mga taong lalayo, may mga taong lalapit. 35. 
what is the circumference of a circle with radius of 5 cm use pi equals 3.14? Kung hindi po matatandaan, ano nga po ba yung formula for circumference ng circle natin? Formula po for circumference, this comment. Okay, I agree with 2 pi r, no? So, when we say circumference, it is the distance around the circle. And there are two formulas usually, no? The c equals 2 pi r if you are utilizing the radius. Or C could be pi D if you are utilizing the diameter. But we know that uh, pi is approximately 3.14. And the problem states to use 3.14. So by substitution, that's 2 times 3.14 times 5, which is 31.4 cm, letter B. All right. So far, so good. Moms and sirs. Push. Next, the sum of two numbers is 80. What is the sum of two other numbers so that the average of the four numbers is 37.5? Did you go for 50, 60, 70, or 77? Yes, tama pong to pi r. Ang pi r squared naman po is area po yun. Okay, si daw, sabi ni... Teacher Neck. Okay. Sabi niya, 80 plus 70 all over 4 is 37.5. Okay. Tingnan po natin. Tama nga ba ang C? We know po that the average or the arithmetic mean no, of the numbers is equal to the sum divided by kung ilang scores yon. Di po ba? And since alam po natin that the sum of the numbers is by multiplying both sides no, by the number of scores, so the sum of the numbers could be taken by the number of scores times the average. So dahil apat po silang numbers at 37.5 po yung average nila, so 4 times 37.5 gives 150. And therefore, kung i-add po natin yung apat na numbers na to, what we know is that 150 po yung sum nila. But the sum of the two numbers is already 80. Hence, to find the sum of the other two numbers, just subtract 80 from 150. And therefore, the correct answer is letter C, 70. All right. I hope na nakuha po natin yung explanation. No? And I hope it's clear. 37. Now, observe the sequence. 3, 8, 13, 18, and so on. What is the 20th term of the sequence? Is it 92, 95, 98, or 101? Okay, letter, okay, 37, nine, 98 now. <laughs> okay, uh, we don't know yet, no? Siguro yung ginawa ng iba, I'm not sure, ha? baka yung ginawa ng iba, hmm, niya, baka ano talaga, no? Kinontinue talaga yung pattern at saka nilista niya lahat <laughs> until ma-reach niya yung 20th number. Maybe, I don't know. But if you could see po, no? Plus 5, plus 5, plus 5 lang po siya all throughout. So if you could see, this is an example of what we call an arithmetic sequence. And dahil meron po tayong common, notice nyo po, no? gaya po ng sinabi ko, nag plus 5, plus 5, plus 5 po tayo all throughout. And therefore, this 5 is what we call a common difference. And a certain sequence with a common difference is what we call arithmetic sequence. And the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times d, where a sub n po is the nth term or the indicated term of your arithmetic sequence. a sub 1 is the first term, n is the number of terms, 
and D is the common difference. With that, our first term is 3. Dahil siya yung first number, hinahanap po natin yung 20th number or 20th term. So all n's will be replaced by 20 and the common difference is positive 5. Take note, if the sequence is increasing, the common difference is positive. But if the common if but if the sequence is decreasing from left to right, then the common difference is negative. So positive 5 po yung ating common difference or simplified. By substitution, that's a sub 20 equals the first term 3 plus the number of terms 20 minus 1 times d, which is your common difference, which is 5. 20 minus 1 is 19. By the Gemda's rule, 19 times 5, it's 95. So D plus 95 gives you 98. Letter C. And that's another formula, no? Yung A sub N equals A sub M plus N minus M times D. Yes, Paul. That's another formula. Yeah. Thank you din po, Sir Arvin. No? Push natin to. Ha, ha, ha. So, may, nag may naglista talaga. Sige lang. Or kung in inyo pong mapapansin, may po pong isang technique, no? Among the, so among the choices po, or in the sequence, lahat po sila nagtatapos sa 3 at saka 8. 3, 8, 3, 8, 3, 8. So, yung sagot dito, nag e end din siguro. Most like, of course, nag e end din dapat sa 3 at saka sa 8. And only letter C, 98, ang nag e end sa 8. Dapat 3 or 8 lang dapat yung ending eh. At saka 98 lang yung perong ganun. So like, so C yung sagot talaga. 38. What is the distance between negative 14 and 35? Did you go for negative 39, 21, 30, or 49? Okay, what do you think? Dog Dao, 49. I hope you could still recall, no? Kung paano nga ba hanapin yung distance ng dalawang points sa isang number line. That is, di ba ito yung negative 14 to 0, no? So, distance nito, of course, it's 14 units. Mula naman sa 0 papuntang 35, of course, that's 35 units. And of course, by the segment addition postulate, from negative 14 to 35, kailangan natin i-add si 14 at saka si 35. Hence, the correct answer is letter D, 49 units. Or, meron din pong isang formula, no? Yung gamit yung absolute value. That is, the distance D between two points A and B on the real number line is actually D equals the absolute value of the quantity A minus B. Or, the absolute value of the quantity B minus A. Okay lang po kapag nagkabaligtaran po sila, yung mahalaga po ay meron kang absolute value. No? So in my case, I let this uh, subtracting their absolute values. No? So negative 14 minus 35 gives you D equals the absolute value of negative 49 which is still 49. Letter D pa rin po. Or, yung, kung kapag ginawa mo, binaliktad mo naman, 35 minus negative 14, it will result to positive 49, and its absolute value is still positive 49. So, okay lang po. That's why don't worry kung nagkabaliktad sila. You will still arrive to the same correct answer. 39. There are 10 vehicles composed of bicycles and tricycles. If there are 23 wheels in all, how many tricycles are there? 2, 3, 4, or 5? Okay, 3 daw. Okay, sige. So I see that many of you answered B3. Okay, I will approach this problem using two methods. The first method is using the drawing method. Take note po ha, I hope na clear po sa atin na yung tricycles, 
ay may tatlong wheels at saka yung bicycles ay merong dalawang wheels. Meron pong assumption dito na wala pong spare tires, okay? At yan ang po talaga. Nag-assume po muna ako. Take note po, meron pong 23 wheels. Nag-assume po muna ako na lahat sila ay uh, motor sa motorcycles muna. That's why I utilize here the drawing method. 'Di ba? Kung assuming lang muna ha, assuming lang muna that all of them are motorcycles. So ilang wheels lang lahat. Kasi merong 10 ano eh vehicles eh. Merong 10 vehicles. Kung assume natin na lahat sila puro motorcycles lang, ilang wheels lang ba lahat? Okay, comment po. 20. Tama po. Kasi kung ang lahat ang 10 10 na yon ay puro lamang motor. So 2 times uh, 10 times 2 sorry. 10 times 2 will be 20 wheels only. Pero sabi po sa problem, 23 po lahat. So magdagdag po tayo. Take note ha, yung tricycle tatlong wheels lang po. So may 20 ka na. So Count with me. When, so we have 21, 22, 23. So yan po, no? So kung mapapansin po natin, itong tatlong to ay merong tatlong circles each, which means that there are three tricycles and the remaining seven are motorcycles. Letter B. That's my first method, the drawing method. And the second method that I did is what we call uh, systems of linear equations. So I let T to be the number of bicycles and I let T to be the number of tricycles. So there are 10 vehicles. So B plus T equals 10. That's my equation one. A bicycle has two wheels and a tricycle has three wheels. So 2B plus 3T equals 23. So these are your two equations. And uh, we will eliminate B so we can have to multiply both sides of equation 1 by 2 or negative 2, depende sa trip nyo. To arrive to, dito no, nag-multiply ako ng 2 dito, both sides. So 2 times B is 2B, 2 times T is 2T, and 2 times 10 is 20. And from here, I subtracted both sides with the aim of eliminating B. So 2B minus B is 0. 2T minus 3T is negative T. And 20 minus 23 is negative 3. Dividing both sides by, or multiplying both sides by negative 1 gives T equals 3. So still, meron pa rin pong tatlong tricycles, letter uh, B pa rin po. And lastly, for today's uh, le uh, lesson or discussion, 40. What is the value of the sum of 9 and 5 subtracted from their product? Is it 26, 28, 29, or 30? Okay, what do you think? Okay. What's your answer for the last item, po? What is the value of the sum of 9 and 5 subtracted from their product? Okay, D Dao. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So from here, the product of 9 and 5 is 45. And the sum, uh, kasi product means you have to multiply them. And for the sum, you have to add them. So 9 and 5 is 14. And since the difference is being asked or subtracted from, then 45 minus 14 yields 31. Hence, the correct answer po for this item is letter D, 31. I hope you understood it. And again, that ends our discussion for tonight. Thank you very much and a great day to one and all.